AWS is revolutionizing how we handle savings plans with their new purchase analyzer built into the console. They're also bringing Oracle Enterprise directly into AWS data centers. There's a sweet new security incidents response service. Plus, if you're into Kubernetes, you're going to love what they've done with EKS Auto Mode and hybrid nodes. Hey, cloud enthusiasts, quick favor. If you're passionate about cloud tech, hit that subscribe button right now so you don't miss any of the AWS updates. Today, we are diving into the biggest announcements from AWS reInvent 2024. And trust me, there is some game-changing stuff that you need to know about going on in the cloud world. We've got eight major updates to cover, everything from cost optimizations to hybrid Kubernetes infrastructure. And I'll break down what each of them means for your cloud journey. Now, let's deep dive into some of these exciting announcements. So number one, the release of the savings plans purchase analyzer. You're gonna to get to model your next saving plans purchases. It doesn't matter whether it's the EC2 saving plan, the compute saving plan, or the SageMaker saving plan. You're gonna be able to evaluate those purchases and evaluate the impact on cost coverage and utilization right inside the billing and cost management console right there inside of AWS. Your input will also generate a recommended commitment that is designed to maximize your cost savings. So this happens right inside the console. It's perfect for those of you who are having to do cost forecasting and want to experiment. Number two, you may know that Amazon Q for developers, which is one of the different flavors of Amazon Q, well, you may not be aware, but since reInvent, they have now allow you to explore Cost Explorer links. So you can actually get deep links straight from Amazon Q about your account directly to Amazon Cost Explorer dashboards. So what this means is you can ask Amazon Q to provide you a deep link to all of your costs over say like the month of October or for the quarter. And you don't have to sit there and click through all of the Cost Explorer dropdown boxes anymore. It will literally give you a direct link to the Cost Explorer dashboard that you want to see. Number three, EKS Auto Mode. Interestingly enough, Auto Mode is this new feature with a little bit of extra cost that basically fully automates your compute, your storage, and your network management for your EKS Kubernetes clusters. This is a new feature for the EKS management system. And so this is gonna enhance it so that you can lower the operational load on managing your Kubernetes clusters. Number four, FSX, which is the file system storage placeholder that has about four or five different subservices such as Windows File System or Luster, or NetApp on tap, just to name a few, now supports intelligent tiering. Well, S3 has supported this for a while, FSX now supports this as well. This is a big deal because this allows your storage to be operationally optimized for cost by cooling it using a lower tier of storage that's slower, but also cheaper. If you need faster, it'll bring it into faster as well. Number five, a feature. S3 now adds new default data integrity checks. Some of you may have assumed for a while that the S3 SDK was automatically calculating integrity checks for the data that was sent and the data that was received. And while it was encrypted, there was no actual integrity check between multi-part uploads or single uploads to S3 to make sure that what you sent is what was received. Now, by default, it actually calculates a CRC-based checksum for uploads not just single uploads, but also multi-part uploads to make sure that data is transmitted over the wire and what is sent is what is received. Number six, there is a brand new service as part of reInvent and it's called the Security Incident Response Service or the SEER. And so the Security Incident Response Service is gonna offer automated monitoring and basically automated investigation of security findings to centralize everything so that you can respond to an incident and get all the data you need very quickly and accessible. It also has a bunch of collaboration features so that different groups can comment and interact around a particular security incident. And it allows you direct access to the AWS customer incident response team, the CERT, which is a big deal. So you'll basically get access to Amazon's prime security team as needed if you use the security incident response service. It does require access to other things like guard duty and whatnot, but is a service worth exploring if you do not already have a commander or a tool or a process for security incidents response. Number seven. So number seven is exciting because Oracle Database at AWS is now in limited preview. So this is gonna enable customers to access Oracle Database services on Oracle Cloud infrastructure, right from this Exadata infrastructure within AWS data centers. This is a big deal, especially if you already have a relationship with Oracle, you're in love with the Exadata platform. This is gonna now allow you in preview to initiate your own Oracle Database experiences. This is separate from the RDS database service that also runs Oracle. 
This is actually Exadata service with Oracle on top of it running inside of Amazon's data centers. So this is an Oracle and AWS collaboration. Number eight, another EKS release, if you will, that came out of reInvent was basically that EKS now supports hybrid nodes where you can now actually bring your on-premise servers into your EKS cluster and run workloads in those on-premise locations that are part of the EKS cluster. So you can use your existing on-premise hardware and offload the control plane responsibility to AWS and conserve your on-premise capacity for on-premise workloads. So this allows you basically to extend the cloud into your data center using servers in your data center has worker nodes inside of an EKS cluster. This is a game changer. And there you have it, eight major AWS announcements that are really shaping cloud computing, particularly around AWS. Which of these updates are you most excited about? Drop a comment below and I'd love to hear your thoughts and experiences. And as always, if you found this breakdown helpful, you know what to do. That like button is waiting. And if you wanna stay ahead of the AWS curve, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We'll be doing deep dives into a variety of AI and operational technologies over these coming weeks. And big thanks to everyone who watched until the end. Stay tuned for more cloud content, and I will catch you in the next AWS update.